Hello and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract and we've been building. So if we go to Zim School just quickly, school, we've gone through all of the basic lessons. Woot, 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 woot. And we're now on templates and building here. And we're rebuilding here at the intro. We're rebuilding this example. We just finished doing the sliders and the dials and the button with the color picker. And now we're moving on to this one where we have a triangle that we're dragging along a squiggle. Now, as we go, watch when we refresh this. We refresh. First one animates, second and third, fourth animates, and finally this one animates in. Maybe we can start taking a look at that animation too, because in our last video we're going to be erasing a tile, and that might take a little bit more long or a little bit longer time than the squiggle. Okay, so let's see if we can do some animation today as well. All right, we'll reduce this down. Pop on into our code. You should check out the earlier lessons, obviously, if you've just gotten here. We're setting style on the label colors. We did part two, make components. That's what we did last time. So we'll come on down underneath that and say part three, make squiggle. And like we did with the other parts, we'll put this in its own container called three const three is equal to a new container, stage width divided by two, stage height divided by two, and we'll position that one, zero comma zero comma left comma bottom comma on, oh this is three, so just on the stage, <laughs> there we go. So this has been positioned on the stage at the left bottom. Zero, zero from the left bottom. Okay, now left is the default, so you could put null there, but mm, may as well just say left. <laughs> it's more readable, perhaps. I'm getting used to that. Okay, and we want to squiggle. Uh, we'll, we'll need to, I'm just thinking ahead, we're going to need to animate a triangle along the path of a squiggle. So therefore, we're going to need a, a reference const path, we'll call it, is equal to a new squiggle, like so, and we will dot center that on three. So often when we're building, we're just centering on the stage and leaving that blank, but when we have a bunch of containers or we're putting things in containers, we have to remember that we want to center that on the container three, and let's have a look. So we open in browser. Wow, it's starting to look just like the original, isn't it? I almost couldn't tell. So there's the squiggle centered on the yellow, but its controls are showing. So we can start those with uh, show controls colon false like that. We also don't want it to come to the top. When we pick it up, by default, the squiggle will come up to the top so that you can edit it. Well, if we've got the triangle on the squiggle, then we want on top colon false like that. I'll drop these down so we can see this a little bit better here. How's that? So now it won't come up on top. We won't be able to tell quite yet, uh, but we'll be able to see that the show controls is false. Now that doesn't mean that we can't show the controls, because watch, when we click it, we can show the controls and click off to that's called toggle so you could say allow toggle colon false and you wouldn't be uh, able to do that uh, there's also just the default blanket interactive colon false which means it turns off all interactivity all right so there's our path and now we have our triangle new triangle and uh, 40 comma 40 comma 40 comma i think it was purple or was it blue or I can't remember what the original color was there of that triangle. It was indeed purple. Purple and we just need to add this to the container which is three 
uh, when we go and animate it, which comes next, so no semicolons yet, when we come to animate it along the path, dot animate, and we can say props, path, colon, the path. In ES6, if that ever happens, you don't, you can just say path. But it's okay. Props, and uh, that will animate along there. Do you want to see it? It's going to be a little bit wrong, but we'll uh, show you what we got so far. Uh, I was saying, though, that animation will put it on the path for us. So we just need to add it to the container. The animate will immediately pick it up and put it on the path if we're animating on a path. So there's no point in trying to position that. Here we are, lesson seven. Whee! All right, so there's one animation along the path. The triangle is not facing along the path. The triangle, in a sense, is facing up, yet the path is facing to the right. So we might want to dot rotate the triangle 90 degrees. And let's slow it down a bit too so that we can see it go time 3000. So by default, that time is 1000, one second. Let me refresh. And there we go. Isn't that cool? There it is animating along the path, but we want to drag it along the path, which means we're not going to care about time because we say drag colon true. Now you can both animate and drag as well. Perhaps we could show you about show you that, in which case we would care about the time. So there it's not animating, and now we pick it up and we drag it along the path. And by default, it will flip for us when we change direction. I guess that's okay. Come in handy if you've got a little character or something like that that needs to flip. Now, to be able to drag and animate along a path, time 3000, uh, we'll also want to, in this case, rewind, colon true, and loop, colon true. So if we weren't dragging, here's what that would end up looking like. So we're rewinding and looping. There she goes, and then it flips and comes back. And so it will just keep on doing that unless you have a loop count, if you have a loop count, or if you pause or stop the animation. Pause, stop, animate, both do those things. Um, but anyway, if we drag, the drag stops the animation by default. So you have to override that with comma uh, start paused colon true, like that. And all these things are in the docs, by the way. Um, I guess that didn't override it. Oh, <laughs> false. One of those double negatives. <laughs> start paused colon false. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and indeed, starts, starts false. But watch this, if I can catch it, I've just caught it, and now I can drag it, and then let it go, and off it goes. And off it goes there. So, uh, not too bad, huh? You can play around with that if you want. So I'm going to comment out all these, though. We do, and we'll just drag from the start. Great. Now, I think we had a little message here. New label, and that message said, drag... Hmm, drag triangle, comma, click path, I think is what it said. And we'll dot pose that at the bottom left. So that would be, say, 30, comma, 30, comma, left, comma, bottom, on container 3. <laughs> three E's. Why not? <laughs> I like that. Three, <laughs> three me. And we refresh, drag triangle, click path. It's a little big. So before we position it, we'll dot ska. Hmm, 0.6 perhaps. Now we refresh here. That's a little small. <laughs> 0 0.7. Did we scale that other one? Uh, I think we might have scaled this drag circle. We probably want it to be about the same. Uh, I bet you we did a 0.8, or did we do a 0.75 on that? Obviously, we can go up and check. Good enough. Okay, there we go. It's a message. Is that what we had on our... Oh, we had a nice big message on our original. All of these were a little bit bigger. Eh, whatever. And 
there she are there she goes doesn't this look a little bit bigger overall I think it does we must have scaled the the um, path as well so that's fine dot ska 1.5 and let's have a look and see what that looks like bit big 1.2 we're centering it I hope my triangles the right size the triangle might be a little bit small we'll go 50 50 50 and 50 on that one there what do you think good if ever that's too small and you can't quite get it you can also do a thing called uh, dot expand like so that will expand the bounding box by 50 so it'll make the bounding box first of all make that interactive rather than just the triangle and then expand it by default 20 although you can set how much and now you see how big that is so I can kind of grab anywhere around there but what it does mean is I was trying to get the squiggle at that point there I got the squiggle but um, and by the way yeah did you notice that when you uh, do this you can still drag along the uh, adjusted path there but anyway uh, that could cause some problems with editing the path so we won't bother doing that all right uh, however that might be better for mobile sometimes things are hard to to press on mobile so we introduced expand it will expand any display object by default 20 pixels and you can reduce that which means you can actually expand it negative two and make the hit area smaller all right, so we got a label. Now we did say that we were going to take a look at some animation here in this video. So why don't we do that? Now all of these things are in their own containers called the one, two, and three. So we could go up and do animation in all of, all of the different places up above. Um, one, dot animate or we could just do them all here one dot animate and if it's an easy animate we we don't need to drop down into the zim duo if it's an easy animate for instance the alpha alpha colon uh, well one then we should make one dot alp start at zero so alp is a chainable method for the alpha property we're going to chain on that we want it to start at zero Otherwise, we'd have to do it this way, 1.alpha equals 0. And then on the next line, we would say 1.animate. You may be used to that if you've come in from, I don't know, using Flash or other things. 1.alpha equals 0, and then we're going to animate. But you see how we had to do break that into two statements. So if we undo it, we could say 1.alp and then animate to an alpha of 1 in a certain amount of time. If we like one second, that's the default, but usually I like about 700 milliseconds there. So the second thing is how long. So now we're going to animate the alpha of the first container to one in seven. Let's increase the time on that just so we can see the animation come up. Watch. I didn't see any animation come up, did you? It's just sitting there. Did we put uh, one in a container? New tile, const colors. You know what? I don't think we did. <laughs> we made a const second, but where's there's the one? I don't see a one. Do you see a one? <laughs> Can't believe we didn't make a container for the first part. Okay. So, uh... Oh, the tile, wait a minute, the tile is the tile. That actually can come out of the first. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's what it was. The tile can come up here. And there's the const first. That's the issue. It's const first, const second, const three. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. Okay, so minor adjustment there. There's three. There's three. Where else do we have three? There's three. And there's three. This is third. <laughs> Jeez. So we have first, second, third. And therefore, this is first dot alp. So we're setting the first of the alpha or alpha the first to zero. 
We're going to slowly animate that up, as you'll see here. Let me refresh. Okay, there it comes in, animating both the text and the circle. We'll increase that in speed to 700. And there she be. And now, uh, we'll copy that. And we'll do second. Like I said, we could have gone up top and put this stuff right on the alpha, but we may as well do it all right here rather than hunt around. Second, we'll set the alpha to zero, but this time we want to wait a little bit. And now, we've got a couple choices. One we can do a Zim series, and a Zim series is an animate that does one thing after another. That's okay sometimes. And it's usually intended to make an object, a single object, say to animate over to here, and then animate down, and then animate back over here, and animate up, and animate over there, like as a series of movements. Uh, it can be used to do a series of animations that are of different things that, that it still works you, you just use the animate function you say animate round brackets and then you have to specify the targets each time in an array so go take a look if you're interested in that kind of thing on the zim site here under examples you'll see something somewhere called animate and i think it's down in the second bit here not animated patterns. There it is right there. Animation. So it's zimjs.com slash animation. This guy right here, that's a series. So you see how it's going from left to right, then it's getting smaller, then it's getting bigger, then it's going back again. That's a series. And what you do is you uh, well, you could put an animate on anything if you want, but if you want it different than a rectangle, here it works out because it's a rectangle and all of these things are animating the rectangle. But if you were to do a series with multiple shapes, then you would have to put a target in here. You would say target equal or target colon some circle. And then you could do what's called a series. As long as the props are an array, it will do these things one after another. However, there is another way, and let's just talk about that. And the other way is with a wait. You can just wait a certain amount of time and then do an animation. If we want to wait, then we should not try and do it with parameters because we'd have to go comma null, comma null, comma null, comma null, comma null to wherever the wait is. So instead, we'll wrap this in squiggly brackets, drop it down, and say props time and then in here wait like that so if we wanted to wait 700 I guess we could that would wait until the first animation is done so here's the first animation it's going to take 700 milliseconds we're going to wait 700 and then animate in the second bit you want to see that so we save that and this is it. So these guys are going to be invisible, and this will animate in, then this will animate in. Oops, did you see what happened there? Components must not be in the container. <laughs> I did that on purpose to show you what it would look like if components weren't in the in the container. So let's uh, scroll on up. I wonder if you were saying, but, 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 when we made this label with components, but, 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 it's not in the... Which one is this? This was in the second. There we go. So now we've added components to the second. Like I said, completely planned. <laughs> it, still, it still didn't go. Oh, what's going on now? Let me look up here. No, 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 no. What do we do wrong? It's called second. Are we adding these things to the second? Yeah, there's the second. Oh, do you see it? The pose. 20, 30 from the right, comma, top, comma, second. <laughs> there we go. So we have to put in all four parameters for the pose before we can access the container. Alrighty, I'll refresh, and there we go. Now, this one's animating in, 
and then that's, that one's animating and you could see it a lot if we put a longer wait time. But we wait 1,700 and then we get this. Okay, finally it animates in this one right away. This one finally animates in. We haven't done this one yet. Okay, so we don't want to do that. Now we'll copy that. And this will then be the third. <laughs> I think I'm running on not enough sleep is my guess. <laughs> how about you? <laughs> that's how that's the life of a coder. That's what we blame it on. Not enough sleep. All right, so we're gonna start off with an alpha of zero for the third. We'll animate it into one. We'll take 700, but this will be 700 times two. And, and are you noticing a bunch of 700s around here? which means we might want to put that animate time in a variable up top here or a const up top and use that. It would then be something like const animate time equals 700. Like that. You don't always do that right away. You don't realize until you see all of these numbers. Because what if we wanted it to be a bit slower than that? We'd have to go in and change all the numbers here. So before we go any further, Let's get all those and turn them into animate times. So the first just animates over that time. The next animates over that time, but waits for the first one. This one waits for the first two and then animates over the time. So we try this, refresh, first one, second one, third one. Nice, huh? Now, believe it or not, that's not necessarily the best way because watch when I, as we go in to build this fourth one here what do we have to do every time we go to test it we're going to have to wait for all of these things to come in uh, so that's sometimes why we would do the animations at the end that's one possibility but on other times you sort of want to see it happening and make sure that everything's going well well check this out this system we animate from. So here's another thing. This We've got an alpha of zero in each case. We can get rid of that. I'll show you in this case. By putting zero here and saying here from colon true comma. So what this means is animate from an alpha of zero to its current alpha, which happens to be one. Its default alpha is one. So that's neat, huh? That means we don't have to put the uh, the other choice there. You can actually use a set alpha colon zero animate to one and do that. And using the set of alpha zero comma, uh, you don't have to set the alpha to zero there. It will set it to that right away and then animate it to that. But I find this harder to do than just saying dot alp zero. Agreed. However, I'm going to undo that. We're not going to use the set. Instead, we're going to animate from an alpha of zero. And let's check this one out and see if make sure that our second one works here still. I can't see the second one. Sure enough, it seems to be working. So it's animating from that. Now, that's not the only benefit of the from. And as a matter of fact, we're going to go in and change this one to have a from as well. Since from is down there, we're going to convert this. Oops, we're going to convert this to props colon alpha zero and uh, time is the animate time and from colon true. Oh, and then changes back to zero. Sorry, change that to zero. No, don't need the alpha zero. Okay, so the first one we're going to animate from an alpha of zero to its current alpha, which is one, in this amount of time. The second one also from that. And now the third one, get rid of the alp, change this to a zero, stick in the from, colon true. Okay, let's check, check it to make sure it all works the same way. Refresh, one, two, three, great. Now check this out, because we're animating from um, this alpha and we're animating to 
the you know if we didn't have any of these animations watch what happens if if none of these animations are here we get this there they are that would be nice um, if we had set them all to their you know zero to start then we wouldn't see any that's you know that's the problem if we set their alp to zero we wouldn't see them but watch this we've got this constant called animate which we'll put right here we say animate equals false like that what this does is it turns off all animations from this time on and we can say at the bottom of it if we want animate equals true to turn them all back on uh, but anyway, animate all uppercase equals false. All animations from now on will be turned off. And that's no problem because we're animating from these numbers to their uh, their final resting point. All right, or maybe I, I can show you this better. There we go. So I refresh and they're already at their final resting spot and we're, we can just start working on this and yet we can still see and use all of these things. Cool, huh? Uh, now watch what, have ha what would have happened if we didn't do the from alp colon zero dot and we're animating to one. You know, that, that would work when the animation's going and we do the same for all the rest of them. So now do you get what's gonna happen? It's not going to do the animation, and therefore it's going to be an alpha of zero, and the animation doesn't bring it up to one, so we won't see it. Refresh. Can't see it. So if we animate it with alphas of zero for all of these at the beginning, we can't just turn off the animation because we need them to all animate up to the one. Same with mo uh, motion. If you animate from off screen to on screen, Use from, because it's it's already on screen. Place it where it needs to go, where, where it's going to end up. Place it there. We, it's easy. We can see it. That's where I want it to be when it's finished. And then say animate from off screen. And that's good, because then when we set the animate to false, they're all sitting right in their final resting spots. Very cool, huh? Anyway, you can read about the animate constant in the docs if you want and uh, see some examples of that being used. So this is actually what I want to do. I want to keep the false here. I don't want uh, this to be, so I'm going to undo that. Animate from an alpha of zero, great. So when we move on to our next one, which will be in the next video, we will um, not have to wait for all of those animations to go. But then when we, whenever we do want to see those animations, we can turn that to true or comment it out. Because watch, if you comment that out, we get all the animations. If you bring it back, we don't have to wait for the animations. Just, they're done already and everything's in the proper resting place. <laughs> yes! All right, so uh, that is some, some work. I suppose most of that might relate to animation on the canvas um, in Zim and techniques that we're using in interactive media, and maybe a little bit less to do with uh, the basics of JavaScript. We've already looked at the basics of JavaScript. We're using, we're using things in there like variables, and uh, you know, we're, we're still using object literals to specify parameters. We've got constants. Um, so it's all still JavaScript, we're calling functions, making classes, etc. It's all still JavaScript. We're now uh, building, and we're seeing some of the advantages of working with the Canvas framework like Zim. Cool, huh? Now, uh, I think I've worked out the volume, so perhaps this one won't um, won't blow your eardrums off when we take a look at this. There's a mother and daughter uh, with a wearable computer. Okay, is that, is that better? <laughs> yeah, there, it's working. It's kind of like... Yay! No, it's smiling! Hi, it's happy! <laughs> ah! Good. Oh, good. You got it. Are you checking it out? No. It's a tablet.
So um, it, it's wearable computing, and it's an app called Hangy. So there it is. Uh, say hello to these girls. Do you remember how? Hi. Greetings. Oh, oh, oh. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. Your robot has some glitches. Yeah, how's it going? So, it's not too bad, bad, huh? Can I get on it? That's a happy face right there. Ah! Woohoo! Okay. Yeah. Yeah. in real life and in computer. Ah, uh, sort of the beatnik happening. Yes, I like it, I like it. Hello! Yeah. Right, so that's Hangy. Hangy.mobi, it had an invisible grid interface, and you would look down at your the device on your chest there, and you could press in these quadrants, or well, actually, I guess sections, sectors, and you could pull up different things. You pull up different faces, different um, shapes, and different pictures, different messages, text messages and you could reveal them to people at any time. And so there, right at the very beginning, we were matching stripes, and that, that was fun to walk down the street and match people who were wearing stripes, or walk down the street with uh, these circles or, or spirals going. People thought I had an electronic shirt. <laughs> I've worn that at conferences too and promoted various things. Uh, yeah, that was made back in the Flash days um, uh, and was sold on the Apple Store and the Android Store as Hangy. Hangy.mobi. I think it's off the store now due to security issues and just updates and didn't bother. All right. Well, we'll see you next time uh, for part four, the last part of this where we do that tiling. And this has been in lesson seven, our building lesson. After we finish this tiling, or the tiling and, and this next video, uh, we move into controls. Controls are a lot of fun. There are things like particle emitters and parallax. And yeah, so we'll see some of those as well. Ciao. Come and join us at zimjs.com slash slack. And uh, let us know how you're doing. Bye-bye.